What's up, Frozones? Welcome to a simple theory video about Tales from the Peaks Plexus' third story, Under Construction. This story has been a mixed bag with the FNAF community, some people loving it and the rest hating it. I must admit, I think the concept is absolutely amazing and absolutely terrifying, but I think that the use of the real-life disease wasn't a great idea. Under Construction is a really cool idea for a story, at least, one that descends into more and more chaos, leaving us with the most insane story we've ever gotten from this series. So before we get into this video, make sure to subscribe, it really helps us out. And of course, there are spoilers for Under Construction here, so be warned. Uh, I have an audiobook and a video summary of the story on my channel if you need it. So uh, let's quickly go over what actually happened in this story. <laughs> On Maya's 16th birthday, she explores an augmented reality game called The World Celebrates You, which is still under construction. Inside, Maya has the time of her life with all of her friends and family on the stage in the Pizzaplex. A year later, her relatives and her friends' relatives start suddenly dying of cancer, but Maya seems to be the only one who is actually concerned. She visits her teacher's newborn baby to discover it has no face and it is made of a translucent jelly but nobody else seems to notice. Quickly, newborns across the world grow into large piles of jelly, each connecting with one another and overgrowing roads and houses. Maya, who hides inside, finally gets attacked by the jelly creature, which engulfs her body but doesn't kill her. She can't breathe, but she is still alive. When I said this is the weirdest story, I meant it. Let's start simple. What on earth is going on in this story? <laughs> At the beginning, Maya's friends talk about the many worlds theory and about quantum immortality. It seems pretty clear that although Maya did take off the headband for the AR game, she never actually left. It's the interesting question of, if you're in a simulation, then how do you know when you've left? Maya, for a whole year, was trapped in the game, thinking that everything strange happening to her was actually real. The question is, how was she trapped in the game and what exactly happened in the end? I think that she died while, while she was in the AR headset, remember that the game was still under construction, the area was probably dangerous and the game was corrupted. In turn, her soul was put into the machine. We know that in the FNAF universe there are many instances where people see virtual reality as a whole other world, relating back to the many worlds theory. Vanessa would get real close up to the screen and zone out and Jeremy couldn't escape the digital world so he cut his face off. Also, the Monty Golf minigame in Security Breach is actually called Monty Golf... I don't know what it's called, but it's an arcade, not an arcade. Because you're literally in another world, even though it looks like the real world, it's actually just a simulation. So that's, that's a nice little nod. Additionally, there's also been instances where someone's soul is trapped in the game, relating to quantum immortality. One of these instances of quantum immortality and the soul living on in a digital world is of course Cassidy in Princess Quest. There, as hinted at by the title of the music that plays throughout the game, she is caught in a loop, and the only way to neutralise Glitchtrap and set Cassidy free is through the arcade conspiracy and by beating the game. This isn't a parallel or a metaphor for Cassidy, this is actually her soul residing in the game, and it's her against the glitch trap amalgamation. Back to Under Construction, and you can see that there are clear parallels between the stories of Maya and Cassidy. Both are souls stuck in the digital world with no foreseeable escape, and the focus is set on them. Meanwhile, there's also an overwhelmingly large force threatening to take over. In Under Construction, I like to think that the jelly monster is kind of a glitch, like it's not supposed to be there. It's the simulation kind of like imploding on itself. It's almost like it's interrupting Maya's happiest day, but more on that in a minute. Of course, in Princess Quest, the Glitchtrap amalgamation is what's taking over it, and you can see how some entities are separate, while the main entity is a huge pile of small entities. Unlike Maya, Cassidy is actually successful in defending herself against the Glitch, allowing her to rest her soul easily. Maya struggles and becomes part of the Jelly amalgamation, which probably means she doesn't get a happy ending. She's just a soul lost to the void with no breath and no body. So let's finally get on to the exciting part, what exactly a happy ending would entail. Now, on Maya's 16th birthday, she literally says that she is having her happiest day, which is a reference to FNAF 3's ending, Happiest Day minigame, which allows the souls to rest happily after getting revenge on their killer. 
Funnily enough, the Happiest Day minigame which came with FNAF 3 doesn't actually happen until after Security Breach. And actually, there's something bigger going on in Security Breach concerning the Arcade Conspiracy. I believe that the Arcade Conspiracy is the actual events of the minigames from FNAF 3, except unfinished. Bloom World is a callback to BB's Air Adventure and the unused Chica's Cupcake Frenzy is Chica's Party. All of them have glitches in them, just like the original minigames, which just leaves Cassidy in Princess Quest. It's possible that, just like Maya, she has her happiest day, which is interrupted by a glitch. I think that Under Construction is actually trying to say that Princess Quest is actually Cassidy's happiest day. Maybe she wants to be a princess when she was older. This happiest quest, as you may call it, was just ruined by Afton's glitch-trap virus, which is defeated by Gregory, who may be the crying child, giving Cassidy her final happiest day and letting her soul rest for eternity. I think that's what most people hope for anyway nowadays. And that's what I believe Under Construction is trying to tell us in an extremely convoluted fashion. I understand why people don't like the story and I understand why people do like it, but either way I think it's really important to consider when attempting to interpret Princess Quest. I've heard the theory that Princess Quest is, Cass is Cassidy's happiest day before, but I've never really been convinced. I think this story helped push me further into that direction, but you're all going to have to tell me what you think about the story and the theories that come from it. Of course, we still have questions about the story. Unfortunately, Maya's sister is called Elena, and I swear to God, if we see her in the epilogues, I'm going to throw my chair out the window. Of course, I'm still not entirely sure what the ending of the story actually means. Understandably, it's the end for Maya, but with the theory of quantum immortality appearing in the story, what does that mean for Maya's soul? These are the things that you guys need to discuss in my comments below and my Discord server. Let me know what you think, make sure to subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.